Today we'll talk about sets. Sets are one more built-in container type in Python, along with lists and tuples and dictionaries, etc. List literals are enclosed in braces, just like dictionaries, but they don't have any colons separating keys and values. When you construct a set, duplicate elements are removed. When you try to add new elements to a set, you can never have any duplicates. An element is either in the set or it's not, but it's never in the set multiple times. Sets have an arbitrary order, just like dictionary entries. You can never rely on the order of the entries in a set. Here's how I create a set with 3, 2, 1, 4, and 4 in it. If I look at that set, I'll see that the elements are not in the order that I specified. They're in some other order that Python decided. They're not always going to be sorted. You just have to never assume anything about their order. Also notice that I put 4 in twice, but it only showed up once here, and that's a property of sets. I can ask whether an element is in the set. I can ask for the length of the set. I can also perform set operations, like union. So if I union 1, 2, 3, 4, and the set containing 1 and 5, then I get all of the elements in either set. The intersection contains all of the elements in both sets 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, 5, 4, 3, which in this case is just 3 and 4. Now neither union nor intersection changes the original set. All they do is combine two sets into one new set. Once you have a set, you can add a new element to it using the add method. Notice that the add method returns none, but it has changed the set forever. So now that I look at set and I try to get the intersection between that set and the one containing three, four, and five, I'll get a set containing four and three. Notice the order has changed from here. Orders are totally arbitrary. You should never rely on them. But it is possible to put any kind of element you want inside of a set. However, the same restrictions on dictionary keys also apply to set elements. You cannot have a set with a list inside of it. It's not important to me that you learn all of the different methods on a set, but you're welcome to explore them if you want. Rather than spending a lot of time learning about the built-in set type, today we're going to talk about how we would implement sets on our own, assuming they were not built into the language. So we're going to work on developing a data abstraction that allows us to perform the following operations on a set that we define. We'd like to represent a set in such a way that we can test for membership of an element in a set, return a set with all elements in both set 1 and set 2. That's a union operation. So if these are my original two sets, then the union would contain 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We'd like to perform intersection, which takes set 1 and set 2 and finds a new set with the elements that are common to both. And the final operation we'd like to support is called a join. This is different than add. What this is going to do is take a set and take an element and give me back a new set with all the elements of the original set and the new element. So the built-in add method on a set doesn't do this. Instead, it mutates the original set. But the one we're going to create doesn't change the original set at all. Instead, it creates a new set representing all of the elements in the old set and a new one. 